and the light came on that the engine was overheating. But we just sailed through jellyfish lately. Oh, look at that. The shaft on the inside is spinning without turning the impeller. I feel your eyes lift the room And such war Be consumed in a moment It's all I want to be All the timing has me lost now for it Some interaction with you Okay, it's a little bit blustery at the moment, but we're expecting the weather to drop off. And just while the winds have been a little bit stronger, we've been tucked away in a back lagoon. Normally when we go for a snorkel, we try and find a spot with you know good currents, somewhere out in the open, somewhere where there's a bit of tidal flow. But here in the lagoon, there's not much tidal flow at all. Um, so some of the stuff that you see in these back lagoons is a little bit different to what you might've seen in our past videos. And we'll, we'll go and have a look what's in there.
So we've got the motor on standby, just out of gear, and we're, we're sailing out of here. So we're being pretend sailors, really, but just under head sail, it's a nice, nice, easy to control sort of way to go when you're picking your way out of a little coral labyrinth. There's where we had our motor failure. Mm -hmm. Looking at that edge. <laughs> well, not a motor failure, that's where we had a judgment failure. <laughs> on behalf of the skipper. That would be such a great spot to dive, wouldn't it? It'd mm. be, because all the water would drain in and out through that cut and fish would really want to exploit it. You know, they'd, there'd be a lot of food going on there and a lot of water movement, so it'd be a great dive. But as it is, it's just a little backwater. It's not a It's all lagoon, or, this whole reef is lagoon, eh? There's no slits in it like we like. No, yeah, and I mean, there was a lot, what it meant, it was because there was very little water movement um, and no, certainly no big waves crashing and then we got those delicate fingers, you know, those fast growing um, Acropora or Acropora corals. Yeah, I was, I was really impressed with the coral. I thought it was really beautiful. Yeah, normally where we go, you know, I want high current, high wave action, lots of water turnover. Um, so all the, all the corals will be that lower, they're still reasonably colourful. Australian hard corals, they're, generally they're not that colourful, they're quite subdued. When people see those beautiful bright reds and pinks, they're normally looking at soft corals up around Indonesia or New Guinea or something like that. But the Great Barrier Reef, a lot of the hard corals here, they're, they're quite subdued in their coloration. So people are often like, oh, where's all the colour? There was a little bit of bleaching there. Uh, there was hardly any crown of thorns damage at all. Um, we saw a few, you know, Drupella snails, a type of snail that eats coral, but they weren't out of over, you know, like they weren't out of hand and overdoing it. So, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a bad reef. It wasn't because it was back lagoon. It wasn't like amazing for me. You liked it, um, but I'm a fish guy, aren't I? Yeah, you love your fish. We've just turned the engine off and now we're officially sailing out of the reef. Hopefully we've got enough wind to get us back to the islands. I want to I want to get back in before the big glass out happens. Yeah, it feels pretty light. Finnica sailing hopefully. Even though, even though the wind at the moment is barely, barely blowing at all and we're motoring, it's still worth throwing sails up in the air because as we go forward we make our own wind and it actually helps us pick up a bit of speed and lowers the amount of fuel that we burn. So motor sailing is a pretty good tactic. A lot of people do it. I mean, it's not like it's a new idea, but if you're new to sailing, it, it's definitely worth um, throwing a sail up because it'll help you go faster and your sail will act as a stabiliser. I've seen people with bare poles getting around and they really get thrown around by the swells. Um, even if there's just a hint of a breeze, throw some canvas up in the air. The only time is when there's zero breeze and you're going really slow, you'll slop around and slap and sometimes it's better just to drop it. All right, so this noise just happened. And the light came on that the engine was overheating. So I just had a quick look then. The valve's open and we just sailed through jellyfish lately. So I was just wondering, are we still getting water? Yes, so we're still getting water to the sea strainer. So I reckon this belt is still tight. So I think we've actually had a failure in our impeller. I'm just gonna undo this hose fitting here, which is normally the salt water bypass to our water maker. Everything's going to hell. And I'm just going to get our deck wash hose and I'm attach it to that. It is a pump, so it'll be it'll put water through under pressure. 
We put water pressure on. Water's flowing through there pretty well. So let's try our motor now. So the only bad part about that is that we're going to have the hose going through there. We wouldn't need to have this bloody motor going if there was wind, would we? And it's not wind. So once we get into the island, I'll just pull that pump apart and we'll put a new impeller on it. I had a look at the impeller. We had it all apart and it looked great. And this is obviously gone. All right, so we've skipped straight to the chase. Didn't want to bore you with me mucking around with tools yet again. But here's the inside of our water pump. And we've got this flexible rubber impeller, which is what does the business. But you can see when I spin it, oh, look at that. The shaft on the inside is spinning without turning the impeller. <laughs> so, um, what, what it looks like, it looks like the locating pin, uh, the key pin is still in place, but just the, the inner um, sleeve has torn away from the rubber. The bonding process has failed. That's alright. We've got another impeller complete um, that's sitting somewhere and I'm just going to dig it out. So we'll pull this out and we'll just replace it. So it should be fairly straightforward. Okay now not everyone has um, an impeller puller in their workshop or on their boat. So there is another way using two screwdrivers to <clears throat> dig in and pry that up at the same time. But what we do want to do is make sure that the screwdrivers don't dent this, um, this face here because that's a ceiling face. So I'll just, I'll put some rags there on the fulcrum of these screwdrivers. And just by putting them down at the bottom of the impeller and squeezing and levering them up at the same time, Ta-da! There's the easy bit done. So there's the actual impeller itself, but oh look, the inner sleeve <laughs> is still the inner sleeve is still there. So we're going to have to get that out as well. And getting that out might be a bit of a challenge as well. Oh, did you see that? How satisfying that was. Okay, so when these things are constructed. You've got this sleeve here, and if you can see, there's been a pin driven through there, okay? And we've got like a little, little bit of a cross piece. That normally lives inside that impeller, nice and bonded in there by some mysterious process, okay? That cross piece engages in there. So all that's happened is that that inner has yeah, come free of the impeller. I just pulled out the, the spare impeller that we, we had on board and I'm not going to say who I ordered it from. <laughs> there we go. It's totally the wrong size. And the I, spare one's on the left. I remember on the right, this, is, this is the one that we just pulled out and this is the one. I, I remember giving a part number for this, and they were saying it's obsolete. This is the new one. So, incorrect. Luckily, being a paranoid sort of character, the last time I replaced the, the impeller, um, the same thing, the, the middle had come out of it, and the impeller veins are in fairly good condition. So, I mixed up um, a fairly good epoxy adhesive. And I've reassembled it really carefully and let it set and I've just been I've just had it stashed away for just this sort of contingency. Ordinarily I wouldn't be that thrilled and I'm still not that thrilled to be putting that in there. Um, but you know, land is just over there and when we when we get in I'll I'll order another part and replace it and then I'll get a spare as well. And I don't know what to do with this, just throw it away. So there we go. I should have. Well, you can't. You just can't check everything that you. That <laughs> you order. You just trust that they, the professionals, know what they're doing. Yeah, when they say that they're a Yanmar authorized dealer, um, you give them a part number and they say no, no, no. It's actually this one. Mm. We we also had trouble getting the wrong fuel filter, but that one was immediately 
you know, I'd seen that one, I was just like, wow, that's just totally, totally out of control. But when you don't have the impeller next to you, and you just get it in a plastic bag, you go, yeah, yeah, that's an looks impeller. Looks right, yeah. No, it's not. It's not the impeller. But luckily, paranoia has saved this once again. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page, as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback and questions, so head on over to the comments section and drop us a line.